Just up at the school today, um, it's Zoe's birthday, so we just dropped off some cakes and drinks. Um, bit of a celebration, enough, enough for E numbers for 26 children. <laughs> yeah, keep everybody hyperactive for the afternoon. But I want to talk about, is my pension enough? Uh, I know I've brought this up before, but there's, there's reasons for it. Um, the main one being is there's a lot of things going on that can destabilize people's pensions, if you're in another country particularly. Uh, what, what do I mean? Well, I work on a 30% rule. I try to increase my income by 30%. And it sounds a lot, but it, it's not, it really isn't. Because if you, if you think about this, the exchange rate change between the pound and the euro, you know, for Spain alone, has cost about 15% on people's pensions if they're transferring money from the UK to Spain. Um, the Philippine peso is also doing rather well against the, the pound or the dollar, whatever. So even that's not doing too great. But those changes affect your pension because those changes hit you in the pocket. And although you may not see it initially, it's, it's you know, at the end of the day, it's costing you money, and that's why you'll hear me talk about um, sustainable income and local incomes, because what you want to do is try and increase your money locally. What I've realized over, you know, the time I've done it is like now, I haven't transferred any money from the UK in a few months, because A, I haven't needed it, but B, it also means that I can move money when the exchange rates are favorable to me. <coughs> so that you can actually get an extra few percent out of your money purely by waiting. Um, but there's always ways to make money. You know, if, you, if you're retired, then okay, you may not be too interested in doing too much, but at the same time, A, it keeps you active, B, some of the stuff that people do to make an extra bit of income is actually quite interesting. Um, but ultimately, it helps keep you afloat because there's a difference between retiring and living within your means and, in, and being able to do what you want to do. They're, they're, they're two different things. And over time, I've seen the pensions decline you know, how, how far it can stretch, you know, with it, because the exchange rates back in 2007 was nearly 100 pesos to the pound. Um, and now it's, what, 62 or something? Or it, it, it's nearly as bad as the dollar was back then, you know, because the dollar was about that uh, to the to the peso. It was about 50-something, 50 54 to the dollar, 54 to the, to the peso. Um, so, yeah, you've got to be, you've got to, bear this sort of stuff in mind because especially now you've got some political changes that can have some major impact for global markets. You've got Trump in the US doing his thing, you've got the Brexit stuff going on and the implications that the Brexit will have throughout Europe, that will have some financial effects. And that's why I recommend the 30% rule, I'm trying to find ways to make money to top your money up by 30%. Um, this also isn't too difficult sometimes. You, you've seen a lot of vloggers appear um, on, on you know, YouTube, and a lot of that is helping people increase their monthly income without too much work. You know, they're going online, doing a lot of chats, etc., and quite simply just yabbering on and making money doing that. In the same way, you heard me mention the fridge and I've had to, the same troll come in on the three different accounts now just to talk about the fridge. But the thing, the, the thing with the fridge is it's not the physical fridge that's important. What it was is the last piece in the puzzle to uh, open up another unit for rent. Um, we have a regular income in the Philippines just off the apartment rentals that would make us sustainable in the Philippines. You know, without any other income we can live in the Philippines because A, we don't have any rent on the, the unit we're living because we own it. 
but on top of that, the other units are all rented out and bringing in a steady income. That's, that's a prime example of getting some cash in without doing too much. Because um, obviously renting a unit out, renovating, etc. It's not a major fee to do that. But obviously if you're coming up to retirement, it may pay you to invest in some property early on so that when it comes to your retirement time, it's already covered. It's already taken care of, so you don't have to worry about these things because you go, oh, you know what, we've got four units or five units or whatever that brings in a steady income. So I've got my pension plus a local income. And that's why I say, you know, when people say, is my pension enough? I would say 30% rule. 30% rule, but also you have to ask, what, what quality of life are you gonna get for the money? Is it gonna be the same standard of living? Are you going to be lowering your standard of living? Would dropping your standard of living long term be okay? Because I know short term things seem great, but long term it may not be so funny or you know sustainable because you get irritated by things. You know, I, it's like me. I know I can live without aircon. I don't need the aircon. I just like aircon. So that, that's that's the important bit. I like having aircon, but with the kids, I need to have the aircon for them, you know, keeping the climate sustainable, right, for the kids, um, but also private health care and other things, because it's not just myself, I'm looking after the family as a group. So there is things that do change on the dynamic as well, which is another reason. A lot of guys don't plan on having a family, but then end up with one. So you've got to take that into consideration when you're thinking your pension. And the earlier you do it, and the earlier you adapt to uh, things changing, the more you can plan ahead because you've got more budget. You know, at the end of the day, if you're still working but you're retiring in two years, three years time, and you go, you know what, my pension is going to be X and I think it's enough but it's not great. Um, I'm going to have to go up, uh, go up the one way street the wrong way today. Sorry, we've got some major construction work going on. So I can, what, what do I mean? They've actually dismantled the entire road there. <laughs> so I can't actually get down the road I need to go down. They're lucky enough, the mat is really quiet anyway. Um, <coughs> Somebody was asking me about why are people driving the wrong way. That's why. They basically just shut the roads down to dig everything up. Um, yeah, so that's the 30% rule. Well, like I said, there's a lot of variables in there. The exchange rates you can't plan for, but you can build it into the budget. Family, you can plan for, but often people just go, ah, you know, I ain't gonna do that anyway, so I don't need to worry about it. But that's when it goes wrong because it eventually happens, and then they're going, ah, oh, I need to make some more money. But if you do it ahead, plan, put thirty percent, work towards getting an extra thirty percent in above your pension, you should be fine. Thanks for watching.